Hello crafters, I'm Dan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this gift box. The overall size, finished size, is three and a half inches by three and three quarter inches by one and a half inches. So it's a really lovely size. Um, if you make three by three cards, they would fit in here and probably the envelopes. I'd, I've tested a three by three card, but I don't have any envelopes to test it with, but there's quite a lot of space left over, so I'm sure it would do. Um, inside the box is just a normal flap box. But as you can see there's plenty of room in there. It would make an ideal um, box for a, a new baby or um, maybe a baby shower, uh, wedding favours obviously depending on you know what you wanted to put inside and uh, what papers you use, what cardstock and designs you used. Um, I've already made four of them here, I'll show you the other three. If I can just get this bow tied I'm not going to fuss about it as long as it looks reasonable like a bow I can always straighten it up after the video you really don't need to see me, see me struggle well actually that's not too bad okay so that's that one uh, I'm not sure a blushing bride or powder pink um, the designer series paper is from whole lot of lovely uh, this paper is also from Whole Lot of Lovely, this is Pool Party. Um, this one is from Pick a Pattern and this colour is Flirty Flamingo. All three of these ribbons that I've used here are our shimmer ribbons. And this is the fourth one that I made and this is from Eastern Palace. Um, Lemon Lime Twist is one of our new in colours and this is a, one of the new in colour ribbons as well. So I'm going to show you how I made this box. Um, I would just like to point out that the ribbon it's uh, wrapped all the way round and all I have done is adhered it underneath this one here Otherwise, and it's also adhered underneath the flower otherwise it's loose. I didn't want to put it so that it's underneath here because I quite like that it's on show. You could change that up if you wanted to. You could obviously um, cover the ribbon if you wanted. Right, now card pieces that you're going to need. Um, I'm using one of the designs from the, uh, what's it called? Birthday Memories, which is the one with the children's characters on it um, and I'm using crushed curry with it. Crushed curry isn't one of the colours that's listed but I think it goes beautifully with the designer series paper I'm using from that set so as far as I'm concerned that's fine. Um, what um, the colours that Stamping Up give us, they're guidelines, um, it's what they recommend but they're not saying they can't use any others. So to start off with the card pieces that you're going to need um, a piece of crushed curry which measures six and three quarter inches by ten and seven eighths inches. Now because I've got all these layers on the box I've done all six sides, top, bottom, sides, back, front, everything. It's quite time consuming so I've done these already and I've picked a real birthday design here so that, that you've got the birthday hats, flowers, I um, don't know if there's cakes on here as well, maybe not, no I don't think there are, um, but daffodil yellow is one of the colours that they um, say goes with this, um, but I think that looks nice with that. Okay, so these pieces, you need two of each, and that's that one, that's... right, so first of all these two here, the Whisper White measures three and three eighths inches by three and five eighths inches and in metric that's 8.6 by 9.2 centimeters. The designer series paper measures three and a half inches by three and a quarter inches which is 8.3 by 8.9 centimeters. So two of each of those and then these two, the Whisper White measures, uh, is that, yeah the long one, um, 
measure three and five eighths inches by one and three eighths inches. In metric, that's three point five by nine point two, and the designer series paper on the top is three and a half inches by one and a quarter inches, which is three point two by eight point nine centimeters. Sorry, I swapped that around. If you've got a directional pattern like I'm using, you need to pay attention to these because that's back and front, that's the top and the bottom, and then these two are side to side. So the side ones, Whisper White measures three and three eighths inches by one and three eighths inches, which is 3.5 by 8.6 centimeters. And then the designer series paper that measures one and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches, which is 3.2 by 8.3 centimeters. So they're the pieces for the box. That's for the box. For the flowers on the front, you need a piece of Whisper White, which measures about two and three quarter inches by eight inches, which is seven by 20 centimeters. And then a just scrap for a little half inch circle. What I've done with these um, flowers is sometimes I've used white and then stamped in the colour. Sometimes I've used the colour of the cardstock and stamped with the colour. Um, that's with the colour of the cardstock. Uh, that's a different cardstock from the actual box. Um, but what happens is if I do the centre bit and I've used coloured cardstock for the petals, I use white in there. Okay, like that, that. But this one, because I use white on the outside, I use pink on the middle. It's just my preference. And I think what's going to happen on this one, I think white's going to look best with the pink center. Uh, pink? A <laughs> crushed curry center. So what we'll do first is we're going to do the um, scoring. So I'll bring up my scoreboard. And I'm going to zoom you out to start off with, I think. Right, I'm going to start by doing the portrait direction. And we're going to score at one and a half inches and five and a quarter inches, which is 3.8 centimetres and 13.3 centimetres. So that's one and a half inches and five and a quarter inches. And then we're going to turn our cardstock horizontal and we are going to score at seven eighths of an inch, which is 2.2 centimetres, and then two and three eighths inches which is six centimetres and then five and seven eighths inches which is 14.9 centimetres and then seven and three eighths inches which is 18.7 centimetres. Now one more bit of scoring we've got to do and it's in between these two score lines down to this score line and then between these two score lines just between that one there. So what you need to do is if you come back to one and three eighths inches which is 3.5 centimeters and just score down to that score line. Now there are two ways of getting this correct rather than just guessing. First of all if you put your uh, score tool into that groove move your paper out of the way, bring your score tool down, move your paper back again and then pushing up that way. Or my preferred method is I have this red line going down my scoreboard so I know if I put this score line up to that red line then I can come down to the red line down here and just go up on there. Then I know that I've got my score line in the right place. Okay? Mm. 
Right, now we're going to do some cutting. Now on this end where you've got all the little boxes, we are going to cut out the first two oblongs and we're going to cut the first two oblongs here. Now this is a little bit different on this bit here. I've got a bit of blue here somewhere. Um, the nature of this box, I prefer to cut that actual score line out altogether. This is how I do it. I start off by cutting on the left side of the score line because this is going to be my fold over, my flap over on my box. So I'm going to cut down as far as that score line that we've only done part of the way across. Okay, so that's the second score line down. Okay, in fact I told you a bit too soon there. Um, right, now we're going to cut across this second score line. Just above the score line. So what I have effectively done is, don't know if you can see this, yeah, I have effectively cut off the score line on both of those sides. Okay, it's come off onto this piece here, so it's not on my box. And I'm going to do the same on here. So if you cut on the right hand side of the score line up to that second score, and then again cut on the score line on the left hand side and as that bit drops it takes off all the score lines away with it. So we've got really lovely straight edges here. Now I also want a straight edge on the rest of my flap. This is the bit where we need to cut the bit out. So first of all cut a straight line to follow on the line that you've cut here which means you will be on the left hand side of that score line. You just cut to the next one, next uh, portrait, no, that score line across there anyway. Um, now if you cut again but on the right hand side of that score line, so you're cutting, oh I don't know if that was one thirty second of an inch or something, and you just cut, cut up to that score line again, cut that piece off and what you will finish up with is like that little bit cut out there. And then I'm going to do the same to this side as well. It's very rarely that I do this on a box, but this is one of those that I do. So the first cut is on the right hand side of the score line, second cut is on the left hand side of the score line, and then I'm going to bring that little bit up and I'm going to cut it off. Okay, so now I've got the two lines like that. Now other cuts we're going to do, I'm not going to be anywhere near so fussy. I'm just going to make sure I've got a straight line on that side and that side and then on the inside there because that's disappearing inside the box. It doesn't matter that we do a mitre on that one. So on the right hand side of this score line, nice straight line up to the score line. Same again on this side, but on the left hand side of your score line. And then we can do two mitres up to the corners. So that one should come off, and then that one should come off. And this will go to get us some really nice corners. If that doesn't drop off by itself, just give it a little bit of encouragement. There we go. And now we're going to do the two on the other side. Straight line on the right hand side of the score line. Straight line on the left hand side of the score line. Mitre up to the corner. and mitre up to the corner again. There we go. Now that is all the actual cutting we need to do. 
but what we do need is to round our corners. To do that, first of all, if you fold the flap down, so you, that will allow you to bend it out of the way. I'm using our retired Project Life corner rounder. You use whatever corner rounder you have, and then there are four that are easy to do. We've got six to do. Easy ones, that one, that one, that one, and that one. So do those first. So just line your corner rounder up really nice so it fits into the corner there really comfortably. And then that one there. Now I can see that I didn't do that cut very straight. I've got a little bit there. Let's cut that off. It wasn't that bit. Right, so what I'm going to do now, fold that flap out of the way now to do this one I'm going to get that side that will line up on this side of my corner punch okay so that will go in nicely but this won't be so easy and it's very easy just to push this too hard and for it to go skew F okay so I'm going to concentrate on getting this side straight and I'm going to watch that this one's not trying to push its way through here so that looks straight to me. There we go. If you get a perfect corner like that, you know that you had it straight. Let's try that one again. So this is the one that's going to sit in nicely against this edge. And this is the one that I've got to watch against this side. Right, so this side's in okay, my left hand. That one I'm watching, there we go, that's gone okay as well. Okay. What will happen if you've um, got it positioned incorrectly, you'll find you get like a little um, a pointy bit there because it hasn't been able to cut it properly. All you need to do for that is just use your scissors and straighten it by cutting it to the edge as quickly as you can without causing any... Um, major bumps or anything. Now we need to fold the rest of our score lines. Make sure that everything lines up as you go and then give a nice crease with your bone folder. and then side to side as well. Don't forget the little flaps here as well. Right, before I start gluing, I'll just explain what's going to be happening. The flaps will be coming in. They will stick to the sides here. Okay, so both sides will stick like that. And then these two outsides will stick out like that. Now this makes the box really sturdy because you've got um, two sides on both sides so that makes that nice and sturdy and this makes it secure because this is all one seam so if there was something a bit heavy in there it's not going to push the seam open because there is no seam. Okay, So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put some Tombow onto these. You could use fast views if you want. Right, 
Now, when you bring this one up, you can make your corner line up brilliantly. then to do the other side, make that line up beautifully. This is why I keep saying to you, cut the straight lines and to cut the, um, do the mitres on these bits here, because the mitres get show, stuck inside, you get a nice straight edge here. Right, now we're going to adhere these onto the sides. So you could do one side at a time if you wanted. I'm going to do both of mine at the same time. I'm going to bring this side up round here and you should find that the top edge, this edge here, will just follow straight round by the um, score line there and then this should line up at the bottom here. And I've just been talking too long and I've allowed it to stick down. Oh never mind, it's still a box. I might have to just trim a little bit off of there, we'll see. Right now let's try and do the other side. Try not to talk too long this time. That's it. Well that's better. Now what I'm going to do is just put my bone folder inside and press down on those two side seams. Make sure I've got some really good adhesion in there. Yes, that looks good. Okay, so does this close all right? Lovely. Right, so... I really should remember to do this little finger lift first, but I don't, I always forget. So what I do is, to make sure I get it in the centre, I line up my box onto my grid paper here. If I hold that bit back. I know that these ends, if I have eight in the centre, they fit six and one eighth and nine and seven eighths. So I can use my pencil, just draw a little line at number 8 and then I know if I use my half inch circle punch I can just take my, can you see what I'm doing there? Yep. So I put my half inch circle punch in about halfway and then punch that out. Okay so I've got a nice finger punch there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adhere my pieces on, but there's one piece that I'm not going to do. That's a sideways, um, no, these are side, that's top and bottom. I'm not going to do the one that's going on the bottom because that one is the one that I'm going to be having the ribbon adhered underneath it. So which one do I want to have on top of my box? I think I'll have that one on the top. So that one I won't adhere yet. Okay, all the others I'm going to pop on there with Tombow. A 
again you can use uh, fast fuse if you prefer Make sure I keep everything up the right way. And then the sides don't need to go up that way, otherwise, that'll be upside down. Oops, sorry about that. Now this side. Do the part for the top, and then I'll remember to do the uh, finger lift as well. There we go. If you find you get little bits like this. It's where I cut out that straight piece on the tab. I just very gently cut that little bit off. I don't push my scissors too far down, but just give it a little bit of a haircut. Right, now I need to put my ribbon across here. I'm using the um, it's crushed curry, what are we calling it? Stitch satin ribbon. This I have loved ever since they bought, first bought this design out. Every time they bring a new design out, I buy it. And I think I've got so many colours in this now. It's a shame that it's not just standard all the time. I think it's beautiful. And I like that side. I don't know whether that's the right side or not. Let me just bring this up to you. Or whether that's the right side. That's definitely got more shine on it, more satin. I definitely prefer that. I think the pattern's more de uh, definite. Right, now, where do I put my ribbon on here? Well, again, I do like to measure. Right, that's... No, let's do this before I do that. Right, the finger. If you put your um, half-inch punch inside here, you need to line it up so that you can see that edge there and that edge. Okay, so the the two edges of your finger lift. If you tilt this towards me, if you can't see it, it probably means that you haven't gone far enough in. But remembering that when you did the original one, you were halfway down, and this has got to be less than halfway down. In fact, I can tell by how tough that is. I'm catching some of the main pit as main bit as well. But that's all right. Let me see, let's close that and you can see properly. Okay. So that's fine. And there's a little bit in there. You can see the little bit where I caught onto the crushed curry cardstock. Tiny tiny little bit there. But that's fine. Not too bad. I have done worse than that. <laughs> right. 
Now I'm going to line this up again at my 6 and 1 8 and 9 and 7 8 and my 8 inch mark I'm doing a pencil mark and then I turn it over and do a pencil mark on the other side. So I got two pencil marks there so I know that I've got to put my ribbon centre from side to side. Now with this I am using about 24 inches I found was a good size. I think you could probably get way less. Um, right now what you need to do with this is If you fold this so you've got halfway, but let's bring this in as well. Remembering which way round I want this to go. Right, I'm just giving that a crease. That's halfway. And I'm putting it this way because this is the side that's going to be going against the box. I'm just going to put some fast fuse on here to adhere it onto here. So if I get that. I've just got a little bit of a blob of glue there. It's because I didn't do it properly last time. In fact, I know what I'll do. I'll run that off onto a piece of cardstock. Bear with me. That's it. I'll get rid of that bit now. So I'm just doing about, I don't know, an inch before and an inch after, maybe three quarters of an inch, because I've only got uh, one and a half, one and a half inches across here. In fact, if I did that there, I could cheat, couldn't I? Right, that's in the centre again now, with my glue, there and there, and then I could just put it across here. I think that should be right. It's such a struggle not being able to see straight lines, really is, not being able to guess the centre. Well, I reckon that is probably a tad off on both sides, but never mind that will be fine. Right, now I'm going to put this other piece on. Now, which is my front? That's the front, so I want this to be up that way. I right, don't move. It's got to look upside down from one side, the back or the front. I'd much rather it looked upside down from the back. Right, I'll turn this sideways. Yep, that's good. Right, brilliant. Right, I'm just going to give all these sides a little bit of a squash down. I should have done it sooner, but I've only just thought about it. come straight up in line with the finger lift which it does. It will look crooked quite a lot of the time because it is loose by the time the bow gets tied it will look slightly off to the side um, but we know it's straight so that's all right. Now the flower that I'm going to do on this one because this is a solid colour I'm going to do it with a white background so I'll use my crushed curry ink and I will use this daisy um, stamp. Oh, here we go. Here it is. So 
So this is from Daisy Delight. This whole stamp set, the punch, the papers, absolutely everything has been so popular. It's really lovely. Um, so yes, I'm going to use that one and the centre. And because I'm using white for the actual flower, I'm going to use colour for the centre. There we go, that's that. And now for the flower, when you stamp this, if you stamp it so that one of the petals comes straight down to the end of your paper, it will be easy to get it into your punch. It's not the end of the world if you miss that because you just have to slice off the corner of your cardstock there if you don't get the petals straight down. So now I'm going to punch that out. Right. Just line it up. And then crunch. And then for the last one I tend to turn it up the other way so I've still got this piece to work with. Okay, so that's that bit done. And then for my circle, this one, this is my half inch circle punch. That stamp is just an absolute tad short of half an inch. Right, okay, so to put my flower together, I very carefully use my bone folder and curl each individual petal. Be careful how you do this because they do come off quite easily. I found that out the hard way. And then to put these together, I just take um, put a little bit of Tombow in the centre of each flower. And then I take two of these and I line up two petals on this side so they're just touching each other. And then I make sure that the two opposite are doing exactly the same. Okay, so if I put those two together, okay, so those two there, oops, I've got glue on my finger, and I'm going to make sure these two opposite are in the same position as well. If you get two in position, then the rest of them must be okay. And just give that a little bit of a press down so the glue gets a grip. And then the third one I'm going to use to fill in all those gaps in between. So I've got a completely full daisy. Just lift, yeah, that's fine. That's good. Got it all. 
Now the last one, I pick up my circle, pop that on the top, then that gives me something to press right down on to make sure the daisy is adhered properly on all the layers. But can you see what I mean, how definite it is by having that um, crushed curry cardstock centre bit rather than just another white piece. I think it makes it pop. Right now for this, if I remember to do everything, I think so. So the last thing is to put the daisy on there and then to, um, no I'm going to do it the other way around, I'm going to tie my bow first and then I'll put the daisy on because that way I can gently make sure that I ease the ribbon into um, a, a, as straight as possible. I mean it's not going to be totally straight just because of the nature of the beast. There we go, that's not too bad. Actually that's pretty clever, I've got the same satin on both sides there and there. It's not the side I wanted but they're all matching so I'm not complaining. So this is what I mean when I say about um, something's not going to look straight because you've got one ribbon on this side, you've got another one on that side. So no matter how straight we've got it here, it's going to make this go off. There we go, like that one's going off. But that's okay. I think it looks better because this is visible. And that's all visible. And what I'm going to do is pop that on there. Whoops. So I just aim that as much of the centre as I can. Just hold it down for a few seconds because I am asking it to adhere to ribbon as well as the cardstock. Oops, don't press too hard. There we go. So, there we go. I've pushed that too hard, haven't I? That's better. So there we go, there's our box for today. Isn't that lovely? She says ever so modestly. I hope you've enjoyed today's project. I'll bring the other ones back in so you can see the other colours that I've done. As you can see I got a little bit carried away with this and kept on making them. I hope you like them, hope you give them a try. Many thanks for joining me today. If you have any comments or questions you'd like to uh, make, um, there'll be a section in the bottom below the video that you can leave your comments or you can email me to, at jam to jambi at jambicards.com. Um, underneath the video on the right hand side there's two arrows. If you press the second arrow it opens up the box. Also in the box I'll put a link to my 24-7 online stamping up shop so if you'd like to buy any of these products you can do. Also in the box I'll put all the measurements where you need to score and all the products are listed all out for you. If you've enjoyed my video please click the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I upload a new one which is normally Sundays and Wednesdays. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.